the Hell Fish and Game with us until 8 o'clock this morning on News Radio 961 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We're joined by Terry Thompson and Joe Thiessen. It's 22, and it's, yeah, roughly 20, 722 at the moment. Bill Colley as well on Magic Valley this morning. On a, on a really alarming note, and, and, and probably sad note, and uh, a dangerous note too, uh, chronic wasting disease uh, has arrived. Yes, and uh, so if if folks have listened to this uh, this show over the last well at least since I've been here, and I'm sure previously with Kelton, uh, chronic wasting disease um, has never been detected in Idaho, um, although it is present in many mid, mid, uh, excuse me midwestern states and even in our uh, neighboring states of Montana, Utah, and Wyoming. Uh, the department just announced yesterday afternoon that. Um, we now have documented uh, chronic wasting disease, or what we call CWD, in Idaho uh, to um, male mule deer up in Unit 14, which is up by uh, Slate Creek or, or Lucille, so northern Idaho, um, both te- tested positive for CWD. And... Um, so that's that's kind of a big deal, and and we wanted to make sure that people were aware of that. Um, and for those that are unfamiliar, uh, chronic wasting disease is a always fatal neurological disease that uh, infects deer, elk, moose, and um, caribou. And so, you know, right now we have been having. Uh, pretty extensive testing program over the last several years, and especially on those units that uh, adjoined with our neighboring states that have documented CWD. This one actually was well away from the Montana border, which is a little bit puzzling. Um, This is still early in the stages where we don't have a lot of information in terms of, of how these deer potentially got infected. But the thing to real, remember is that uh, geographic boundaries of states um, aren't recognized in the animal world, um, and they they just they can migrate. Um, so we don't know how how these uh, deer were infected, but we do know that it's now in the state. So um, what does that mean to hunters? Um, right now, what it means is that the department is going to be uh, stepping up a uh, a chronic wasting disease action plan that has been in the, in the works for for several years in anticipation of an event like this and we'll be doing a lot more investigation and trying to come up with a plan and try to figure out if if we have more deer infected um, so right now we can't say if we do or we don't um, was this isolated we don't know but we know we have it and so uh, from a hunting standpoint it's a big deal when you, someone comes through a check station, there's a test for this, I would assume? So we, what we do is we uh, remove lymph nodes in the neck of the deer. So, and, and that's a really good point because somebody may say now, well, I want to get my deer tested, but if we no longer have access to the lymph nodes, uh, you can't test the meat to uh, determine if it had chronic wasting disease. So um, it needs to be done pretty close after harvest just because then we have access to the head. And so if if hunters are still out there hunting and they want to have their deer tested, they you can either go online. Um, on the department's website, we have a video that shows how you can harvest those lymph nodes and then uh, submit them for testing. Or you can bring it to any fishing game office and we will uh, – pull those lymph nodes ourselves. Well, is there a danger to anybody who actually sits down and then eats the, the, the venison? So, excellent point. And I just, I wanted to bring that up because, um, the, so the the recommendation from CDC is to not eat the meat of a known infected deer. Uh, I want to bring that up because uh, the Idaho statesman put out a story last night on this uh, chronic wasting disease um, issue. And in that, they mentioned that Fishing Game says it's okay to eat the meat. The Times News has now shared that story, um, but that um, inaccuracy has been corrected 
in on in the statesman. So I checked this morning. The Times News still is running the story as written. Um, so I'll be calling them after this show. But but yes, um, you should not. The recommendation is to not eat the meat of an infected deer. By the way, we should probably note that if it's a, if it's found in one animal, it's probably already in not just around the Panhandle, but probably in eastern Idaho too, because all the proximity to those three states. Well, we can't say that yet. Um, I'm hoping that if that won't be the case, but um, but at, at this point, all we can um, say is that we have two positive tests. Um, and, uh, so, you know, this is, it's kind of this, um, heads up to everybody that, uh, because it was kind of one of these things where I think we always would say, you know, it's going to be, it's kind of inevitable someday it's going to be found here. Um, we were just hoping that inevitable meant many more years down the road, but, uh, it's here now. Um, I don't know if it's to the point of having to say that it's, it's, we're going to have to live with it. Um, Lots of unknowns. Uh, I don't want to get into too much conjecture. The one thing that I will point out, and I was heard this yesterday from staff, <clears throat> excuse me, is that these deer were not exhibiting any outward signs of being sick. Um, that's actually not untypical of uh, of deer or elk or moose that that have CWD. So um, you can't just assume by looking at an animal if they are infected or not. Hey, we've got about uh, 30 seconds, 40 seconds before the break. Can you squeeze in trapper education classes? Sure. So we have a trapper education class coming up again at our regional office. That's going to be Saturday, December 4th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, remind folks that if you have uh, any intention of trapping wolves, you have to have both the trapper education class as well as a wolf trapper education class. If you'd like to sign up for this class, give us a call, 208-324-4359. Ask for Tanner A, and she will get you signed up. And by the way, you don't trap a wolf by grabbing it around the neck and wrestling it down. No, I, <laughs> at least I wouldn't. <laughs> We've got a short break. We've got more coming up. Terry Thompson and Joe Thiessen joining us from Idaho Fish and Game. It's 21, 730. The news first. Uh, before we get to some more details with these two, Bill Colley on Magic Valley this morning. On News Radio 961 FM 1310 KLIX at News Radio 1310.com. 7.35, and I got a bombie 21. Uh, I wanted to mention we're joined by a couple of guys from Idaho Fish and Game. You don't mind being called guys, do you? It's sort of informal. Oh, no. No, totally fine. I don't want to insult state officials. I just, you know. I saw a bumper sticker the other day on a lifted diesel truck that said, I identify as a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get a break, though, when you got to the pumps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we wanted to mention Joe Thiessen and Terry Thompson uh, joining us today, and we're talking uh, just the last few minutes about uh, chronic wasting disease. And first of all, we got a question uh, from uh, Smitty. He's writing from Jerome. I want to get to that in just a moment. Bill Colley, too, on 96.1 FM, 1310 KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. And he is curious to know how far apart these two deer happen to be. Yes, and uh, we do know that uh, because we actually talked to the the folks that because uh, we can we know who harvested these deer. Um, it's crazy, but these were these deer were about a hundred yards apart, um, and I can't say if they were hunting as um, a group. Um, it was a youth hunt that was going on, but I don't know if the two hunters knew each other or. If they were, they were harvested on the same day, um, don't have that kind of specifics at hand, but but very close proximity. And you got a note during the break uh, as well from the office on actually eating the uh, the meat. Yeah, so uh, 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 Mike Peterson, our fish manager, is always our uh, go to call. You know, call a friend, uh, uh, and he sent us a text a few minutes ago to to remind folks that you know while we say. Uh, that the CDC is recommending that eat, that the meat not be eaten. There has been no confirmed transmission uh, from eating meat from a CWD infected animal to a to a human. It's not a virus. I mean, it's like a protein, right? Uh, it's a pro. It's a misshapen protein called a prion. Right. That's what causes uh, problems with beef cattle, for instance, or dairy cattle. 
Yep. Um, and I always uh, lose uh, Crutchfield. Oh, I'm probably massacring the name on that one. But um, yeah, it's uh, mad cow disease. Uh, similar. You, you got a couple of uh, notes here on, on better news. Uh, as we were talking earlier, you like a lot of input from the, the public, especially the fishing and hunting public. Uh, you got an open house coming up in just a short while for some possible changes. Yeah, so we have uh, Upland Game and for Bears and Turkey uh, changes for the 2022 and 2024 season setting. Uh, wildlife regulations run on a two-year time frame, unlike the fisheries, which do three-year time frame. Uh, that that meeting is going to be at the regional office on December 7th, and it's going to run from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Well, about, by the way, hunting for your turkey is probably the only way a lot of people get one on the table. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the ones they raise on the farms are in short supply right now. Yep. When people come to these meetings, uh, there's a lot of, and obviously most of it's about numbers, isn't it? Aren't they asking questions just about take and things like that? Yeah, it, it tends to have a little bit more of a population dynamic where we're asking people what they're seeing from a population level. What are, what are their encounter rates? What have their harvests looked like over the last couple of years? Um, but a lot of it's also just informing them, too. And there's a lot of back and forth where this is an opportunity for them to suggest what they'd like to see out of their resource. Uh, and, and then for us to, to say, is that realistic or not? And so that a lot of it's just a back and forth. And, and as much as a it, it's a information collection opportunity for us. It's an information, uh, you know, dissemination where we're able to provide information to, to sportsmen. And moving this around every two years and making changes every two years if you can, or if you, if, you know, if, if necessary, does help with management because you sometimes see population spikes and some years you want to make sure you can better manage those. Well, it's like anything that involves working with a natural resource or out in the environment. Uh, you're not going to farm the same every single year and, and we're going to actively manage our populations to, to kind of uh, work with the environment and, and deal with the populations as they go up and down so that we can sustain it over a longer period of time for many, many generations of, of sportsmen to utilize it. Go ahead. Go ahead. The, I was just going to say, uh, you know, we had the badger fire in the South Hills. That was a, a classic example where um, we lost some winter range. Uh, it just happened to be uh, right at the – when uh, season setting was going on. So we kind of changed those, uh, some uh, harvest numbers or, or <clears throat> ta availability of tags to respond to uh, habitat loss. Uh, many times uh, when you lose winter range, um, you know you're going to lose some deer because there's just not enough uh, suitable habitat to carry them through. So uh, many times we will take the approach of, of harvesting more animals, uh, figuring that if they're going to die, let's give our hunters an opportunity to get out there and harvest those and put them in the freezer versus letting them die and, and, uh, and decompose on the, on the landscape. So, um, you know, th the other thing to point out is historically our public meetings are very poorly attended. Um, and, and I just wanted to say that, you know, this is a great opportunity to, uh, to get involved, uh, meet our biologists face to face. Um, it's a great crew, um, not only here in the Magic Valley Regional Office, but statewide. Um, we're passionate about the resource and, uh, you know, our, our goal is to provide opportunity for hunters, anglers, trappers. So, um, it's really important to us to hear from, from everyone. So, um, I would strongly encourage everybody just, even if, even if you don't think you have much to offer, just coming in and, and talking to our biologist is, is just a great opportunity. Uh, next topic. Uh, I've learned in the nearly seven years I've done this program that the words non-resident to some of our listeners are some of the dirtiest words in the English language, <laughs> uh, but, uh, big, uh, big game tags for non-residents are going on sale. Yes, December 1st, 10 a.m. So if you have family and friends who live out of state and like to come and hunt with with you because Idaho has such great uh, opportunities for big game, uh, those tags go on sale on December 1st. This last year, um, we had a, a sig pretty significant price increase for non-residents. Uh, residents' prices did not change. 
And so we were anticipating uh, the potential of even having surplus tags um, going into the hunting season. Well, they sold out in what, probably March, if not even some before that. We're anticipating this year they're even going to go faster. So uh, if you, again, if you have friends and family that uh, like to come to Idaho, because we all know uh, hunting is a great opportunity for uh, family traditions to be established. And, and so if you have that family tradition of everybody gathering together and getting out on, on the hillside for some hunting, uh, make sure that they're, um, they're aware of that December 1st. I will point out too that the commission did uh, make some changes uh, about a year ago uh, where non-resident hunters now have to pick either their game management unit that they wanna hunt in or their elk zone. Uh, they Their tag is not like the uh, resident has the opportunity to go in and buy an over-the-counter deer tag which allows them to hunt in any open unit. Uh, the non-resident has to pick their, their um, their game management unit, which dramatically limits uh, how many non-resident hunters are on the landscape. we got more coming up in just a couple of minutes. I've got to get to a break for the Cal Thomas Morning Commentary at 745. We're at 24. Uh, I wanted to mention Terry Thompson and Joe Thiessen joining us this morning from Idaho Fish and Game. Bill Colley as well on Magic Valley this morning on News Radio 961 FM, 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com.